What's going on, fellas? Stick around and you get to see me do some experimenting for Carlos. Burn a little midnight oil, and I gotta tell you, my neighbors love me. They're always sending the cops over to make sure I'm okay, you know, like a health and welfare check. Okay, everybody, so basically you're gonna be seeing me doing some things in this video that will make you ask yourself, what in the heck is he doing? For the most part, what I'm trying to do here is to determine if running a very hot, Lean flame is just as effective as running a very rich flame, which wastes a lot of fuel and causes a fire in the, the firebox there, which I don't like very much. So running it lean and very hot is very good for this particular machine because of the way the preheat system is built. See, running at this rate right here is very good for the machine <laughs> as far as steam out, but it appears to be putting out the same amount of steam as when we run it at very rich. Now, I don't have my temperature set up. Yep, that pump's just killing me. We just blew the pump. That's a good sign though. That means we're well over 200 PSI's right there. So that's good. Um, in case you don't know what's going on with this device, a little bit more than the eye can see. There's a preheat coil wrapped around this combustion chamber that glows to incandescent levels well into the thousand degree range, preheating that water before it even gets into the boiler. So a lot more going on than what we can see there. That's another good thing about running it rich, is it will do that. See, this small rich flame is super hot. I think it might even put off more energy than the big fireball we had shooting out of there. I mean, when you look at the steam, it, it appears somewhat the same. I am gonna get some temperature gear on this thing tomorrow. But I'm just kind of messing around learning how to use this machine. I need to know its ins and outs. I don't want to just ship this off to you, Carlos, and not know a lot about it. I need to know what to do and what not to do. And in this video, we learned that this right here is not the best thing. See that fuel dripping in the background? There's unburnt fuel dripping down that sidewall. And we're still seem to be putting off about the same amount of steam. It could be a way higher temperature, though. That's a dumb thing to say for sure, but you see that little fire I got going in the firebox? I'm really pushing the limits for this small compressor. So don't let this think it, the machine doesn't work. We're just pushing it to the limit because I have to know this stuff before I talk to you. So we would never want to run it this high, and that's what this test is uh, learning right now. So there you have that. Okay, so pretty much throughout the rest of the test here, I'm going to be learning what to do and what not to do. And just to give you a quick summary, it turns out that running a very hot, lean flame is better than running a large, rich flame for several reasons. And I think a lot of it has to do with the preheat system of this boiler. We're only looking at half the picture right there. So, I'm definitely glad I did this test with the flu taken off because it enabled me to see the shortcomings of running excessively rich. We just don't have the oxygen we need to burn all that fuel. I mean, there's got to be a limit somewhere. Okay, here we are, we've turned the flame down. We're just taking a look at the difference. Mind you, it's 80 degrees outside, guys. You can see I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. So to see this much steam in this kind of weather is definitely impressive. If it was winter time out, that thing would look like the freaking Challenger spaceship taking off or something. Bad reference anyway, but you know what I mean. Some space shuttle that didn't blow up and kill everybody. Uh, <laughs> there ain't no walking my way out of that one. So anyway, I'm just kind of testing. I did a quick shut down there to see how easily it lit back up. It fires right back up excess heat so running this small super hot flame man I'm definitely digging it that's gonna self clean as well putting out a beautiful blast of steam there I suggest that anyone who goes to use one of these things store rainwater to ensure that uh, you reduce the maintenance as much as possible we're gonna have to pump CLR through this thing on occasion to scold all the lime in the, out of the machine all right, let's look at the difference here. We just ramped up the flame, and I gotta say, I see a reduction in steam. It gets wetter. 
I know that may look hotter to the untrained eye, but you see how our baffle isn't glowing red hot anymore, or yellow hot anymore, it's just kind of red. And look at our combustion chamber. It is also kind of toned down. So I just turned it back to a rich high oxygen flame. And look at that. Steam output seems better to me. See how that thing's glowing brighter now than it was? So the, the infrared radiation coming off of that baffle is pretty much cooking those coils and that's what we want to see. It's also, the combustion chamber is yellow hot right now and it is preheating that water probably far better than any other way I could have come up with because it's using infrared radiation off the combustion chamber that would otherwise be wasted to preheat the incoming water. So the velocity running through those quarter inch coils is quite high though. Testing is done for today. Hopefully that pump will be here in the morning. And I just wanted to show Carlos what I got going on here. This is a steam gun that I have. This is a big heavy duty one. And I have the bypass valve hooked up like we discussed. Unfortunately, this is 150 PSI bypass and it wasn't enough. It pops off the second you turn the machine on. <laughs> so we have confirmation we are well over 150 PSI's. I do have a higher pressure pop off valve that I'm gonna be testing. But uh, we're gonna wait till we get a pump that's actually not a complete rip off. I'm getting ripped off on these pumps bad. This will be like the third one, I think. And um, yeah, that's where we are. Just uh, it's impossible to find a pump for this thing. If any of you guys have any input or war stories about pumps that you've purchased off eBay or Amazon. I'm just getting lied to left and right and um, they're just junk. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. We may end up uh, going big here. This isn't supposed to be a pressure washer though. That's the thing. I don't wanna add a 1600 PSI pump to this thing. It's, it was never designed to do that. So, I'm going to have to uh, hope for the best on this new pump. Alright, so I got a new pump on the way in the morning. Hopefully we get some better results. Actually, it's at the post office right now. I just can't get to it. It's locked. So, everything seems great other than the pump issue. I may end up completely changing pumps all together pump types even no more diaphragm pumps might have to go with a pressure washer pump but uh for the most part that's all this test was about was to see if this pump was going to work it is not and to see how much more energy we could get running this thing with the flu off we can run it at higher operating levels with the flu off because it'll breathe better. 